Welcome to the Married and Real Estate Show. My name is Josue Soto, Rebecca Soto, and this is a place where you learn from power couples like the Fazio, how they build their business and a life of love. I that, love that was like two movie stars I just saw. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, my um, gosh. Welcome, Chuck and Angela. They are from Phoenix, or just outside of Phoenix, Arizona. Powerhouse couple, so much here on your resume. But I mean, I'm looking at your stats here. You've sold 40 million a year. You have overseen 40,000 homes and 9 billion in real estate. I guess that overall. Um, oh my gosh, you had Revelation Real Estate with 900 agents doing over 2 billion a year. And now more recently you hit 3,000 in your organization, almost 3,100 right now, yeah. EXP. Wow, congratulations and welcome. <laughs> yep. How are you? Good, what a privilege yes, absolutely. to be with you, you guys. So and I want to apologize. I knew you guys were starting <laughs> live at four, but look, life happens and one of our kids went missing. And um, now I just want to, I want to beat okay. the crap out of them. Yes, we are. Punch so. in the face. <laughs> Gosh, well, the, the important part is that everyone is found, everyone is safe, yeah. but the family comes first. So this this can always wait. Yeah, <laughs> Those are problems and pivots. Don't worry about it. As long as he's yeah. fine. Well, he's found. I don't know if he's safe right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, listen, um, you know, we know you and we feel like we know you really well, although we've never met in person. But tell our viewers a little bit about who you are, how you guys got started in real estate, how you met. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So um, I'm originally from New York. I, I My main thing was I ran nightclubs for a living um, for the mob. And it's in our book. So my book's an open I'm an open story. <laughs> um, moved to Arizona the end of 98. And I said, I want to do something where I can make a lot of money and be my own boss. So I said, let me get in real estate. And the crazy thing, living in New York, I never even owned real estate. So it, it was it was just something I was jumping into that I knew nothing about, zero. Mm -hmm. And especially in a brand new state. So I went, I got my license and I hung it with a Keller Williams and I was there for about a year and I was broke. I was doing no business. My, my life was miserable at the time. And I joined a team and one day at a team meeting. In 2001. So there was about maybe 15 agents on this team. Wait a minute, team. you're not gonna tell the first story because you jacked that up. No, <laughs> no. So I'm, I'm, they have team meetings every week and we're sitting in the team meeting and a husband and wife ran the team and I was friends with them and in walks this beautiful blonde. Now, my wife used to be blonde. I'm actually blonde. She's actually blonde. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Like mm -hmm. platinum blonde. Mm -hmm. Like she walked in, Denver Bronco cheerleader. <laughs> she walks in and, and like my mouth must have hit the floor and Aww. and the the okay. owner the guys who ran the team um, he laughed at me because I'm like, check her out. And I'm some broke real estate agent. <laughs> so that, that's how we first met. No, that's not how we first met. That's yes, it is. You that's, said, exactly that's how you saw me walk in. Uh, that's how we first met. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's his side. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. His side and her yeah. side. <laughs> so, so the story is, and it's, and it's in our book, so everybody knows. So she sits towards the front of the room. I'm You're in the back. You're going to tell it wrong. Nope, I'm going to tell it exactly the way it no, happened. Because yeah. I love it already. <laughs> so literally, I walked in. I walked in. It was my first day in real estate. I was very focused on being successful because I was a school teacher with a little child. And I was like, I don't want to be broke. And you walked in and you looked at this gorgeous guy no. sitting in the back. Oh, no, no. That did happen. No. So I walked in and I was very determined to listen and learn. And so I sit down, I'm focused, and the wife is like writing sales on the board, asking who's like producing. I'm all pumped. So this I'm is like, like 2001. 2001, yeah. Yeah, 2001. And so I'm like so excited because she's like, who's doing sales and writing them on the board? Who's doing listings? And all of a sudden I hear this voice 
from the back of the room, like, hey, Nikki. <laughs> well, wow. you know his name is Nikki. Oh, and by the way, I'm not, I'm not supposed to say that. Oh, one. no, you're no, not. No. Hey, um, wife girl. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, hey. Oh, your are you on a diet? Changed. Yeah. Hey, are you on a diet? She was on a diet at the time. Whatever. So she was he's losing already himself. testified himself. And so she turns around all happy and she's like, oh, yeah, Chuck, you can tell. And, and I goes, said, I can hey, see the I, board I now. can see the board now. Um, <laughs> the first oh, words. The first, so it was, like, it was like the exorcist. I did my I watched this beautiful blonde girl's around. head turn around without the body ever moving. <laughs> but I'm, still I'm very flexible. Did. I'm yeah. very flexible. Okay. And the first words ever spoken to me was, what are you, an asshole? Oh! <laughs> so so I'm like, oh my gosh, a girl after my own heart. <laughs> She spoke your love language. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was See? not our love language. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love it. So it was love at first sight. <laughs> yeah. well, for me, it was. Yeah. No, you were awful. But I thought you were gorgeous. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That is amazing. Okay. Yeah. Now, fast forward. Tell us a little bit about the family, the kids. Tell us a little no, bit about. No, 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 hold on, wait, because I do. Think... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> Take us on that journey. Continue. So, so the journey was we were both going through problem marriages. I, I had two kids, two younger kids, and she had one younger son, and um, you know she wanted nothing to do with me at first, no. and. Uh, there was a time that the whole team was at a bar one time and I would, happened to be walking past the table where she was at. And one of the girls on the team who knew me, she said out loud, she's like, loud. Hey, you ever think that you would date Chuck? <laughs> and she, I was dumb. I was she dumb. goes, I only date smart guys. <laughs> I was and awful. I'm like, yeah, all right, I'll fix her ass. So we were both <laughs> awful. We were both awful. And thank the Lord, thank the Lord, I got my wits about me. Yeah, so we, we wound up, um, started to work together. She didn't want nobody to know I was dating her. No, I made him so keep I, it a secret. She made me keep it a secret. <laughs> and, um, yeah. But, um, you know, over the course of time, God, God got a hold yeah, of us. Yeah. And um, it radically changed our lives. It really did. Yeah. And we wound up leaving Keller Williams, and we always said it was the grace of God. We were broke. Like, we were so mm -hmm. broke, we were ready to move in with my parents. Yeah. And if you, know my, if you know my mom, you'd know what motivates me not to move in with them. She's not going to watch this. Yes. <laughs> so, so, that's, so we went from, we were broke. Yeah, very broke. <laughs> to hanging our license with an independent brokerage. Um, and uh, they had about 3,000 agents at that company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, we went on to be in the top agents at yeah, that company. brokerage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then running one of the top teams in the country. And in 2005, starting our brokerage, um, we didn't even have a physical place because where we lived was still all being built up. So we were in a temporary location our first year we recruited 80 agents mm -hmm. into nothing. Into like, nothing. Really. We, we, sold <laughs> yeah. them, we sold them on a dream, yeah. a vision. It was a good dream. <laughs> and um, then fast forward, we, we grew to be one of the top independent brokerages in the entire country. Wow. Single offices, yeah. That's and then we freaked people out and moved to the EXP. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. So what would you say helped you to be able to um, scale so, so quickly and so, so much? Because I know right now you guys have, I know prior to moving to EXP, you guys, fast forward, you guys have a 10,000 square foot um, office, right? Like an office space or something like that. I can't remember. I've read something about 21, that. 21,000. Mm -hmm. 21,000. There you go. That's yeah, cool. So we built, <laughs> we, were, yeah, we were actually featured in Inman. We probably built um, one of the coolest and biggest real estate offices um, in the world, probably. Yeah. Um, it was a vision God had given me many years ago that we made come to fruition. So inside of our building, 
Um, it's just, it built it from the ground up. It's a custom building. Um, we have a full bar, cafe, uh, event center, training room, game room, podcast, podcast room, Esthetician. gym, <laughs> green Whoa. show, wow, um, 7,000 square foot patio that we'd have live bands on. Yeah. So um, we, we, we built something that the industry thought we were nuts, but we understand connection. We understand we were created to be around each other. So quite honestly, when we made the move to EXP, people right. Inman, Inman did another article <laughs> and they thought they were going to catch us in some sort of lie. They go, aren't you the guys who built the biggest physical building? Now you're with this virtual company. And we're like, yeah. Yeah, it works. It, it goes works. together. Connection yeah. is EXP. Yeah. EXP yeah. is connection. Do you still have that building? Yeah. yeah. You do. Okay. All right. So yeah. you made it a branch office with EXP and you continue doing that? Yeah, it's, it's a branch office, but it's also a co work space. Yes. Oh, so, is awesome. Yeah. So co work the future. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of businesses work out of there. And mm -hmm. it's a great way for our agents also to prospect. Wow, that was amazing how you were able to make that transition, convert into COEX, and that's that's a great way to recruit. Yeah. They, they yeah. we, also own, we own our own real estate school also. Okay, all right. Yeah. Wow, so. wow, wow. So, again, all of those things are great, but how did you scale? Like, was okay. there any one particular thing? particular thing that helped you to scale that that big that far because that that's very unusual <laughs> i think there are two answers the primary answer is that god has blessed us we're blessed i mean no. glory no. honestly because we're just a couple of pukes and he just well to you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah true so but the second thing is is he gave us the wisdom to never stop recruiting like we just constantly look for talent and it's one of our passions everywhere we go, whether it's at a restaurant or, you know, at on vacation or whatever well, we're well, doing. You know what? Let's let's backtrack a second. It actually fits into your show. So when I seen you guys doing this, I said, oh, my gosh, we need to be on this because. Oh, I forget that part. We're best friends. We're, we're, <laughs> yeah. we, we live and breathe what we do together and we're best friends yeah so no i'm not saying the only way to be successful is that you need to do things with your spouse or significant other but but i have to tell you when when god says two will become one mm -hmm. we're one we are and what we say to people when you have two people that are the same and our marriage is perfect it is it's perfect we're unstoppable because there's nothing in our in our life that gets in the way that gets in the way of our growth. It's so true. It's so true. So we wake up every day, seven days a week, living and breathing real estate and building. So if I if I were to say, like before we were together, we're both introverts. Okay. Like full introverts. We could be happy by our, by, by ourselves. ourselves. And then the funny thing is, is prior to meeting. We were happy. We could be happy by ourselves, and then we found each other, and we're happy by ourselves with each other because he's me and I'm him. It's God is so sweet that He would put two people together. She's a she's a hot me. He's a hot me. <laughs> I'm a fat hot. Well, he is a little bigger than I am. <laughs> but honestly, if it if it weren't for our relationship, now I'm we say perfect because perfect is relevant. Like the world sucks. And, but our, our relationship is as perfect as it can be on this earth. Mm -hmm. And so it's perfect. And we could not accomplish what we accomplished without this type of synergy between the two of us. Yeah. You know, when we teach, we, we do a lot of traveling and speaking. And, and one of the things that I always make clear to anybody in the audience, before I start to speak about how do you become successful in business, if you're not successful at home and right in your sense. life, mm -hmm. you won't be successful, or at least at the level we're at in business, because life consumes you. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, think about it. I mean, even if you guys have a great marriage, and we have a great, if you fight in the morning, you're shot. shot. 
How yeah. you can't yeah. work. Yeah. yeah. You're spending right. the whole day trying to recover. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So could you imagine people who do that, that every day? Every day? Yeah. Like they dread going home to the significant other and mm-hmm. that you can't thrive in this world if the person at home you can't even trust or communicate with. And then go back to this truth. We talk about this all the time. Who's in control of this? We are. We are. He is, and I am. Yeah. And so we get to decide every single day to make the decision. If we're fighting, let down your pride in Exactly. Anger. Like we have this, we have the power over this. Nobody else has. It's God mm-hmm. and it's the two of us. Mm-hmm. So we have chosen, we have made the choice to make this great so that we can do everything else. Yeah. You know, I love what you just said that, um, you know, you don't want, you want to start your day with a, with a clear, positive message for each other. Just, you know, not with an argument that way you go to work and you can't even think about it because you're still thinking about how to resolve this issue that you're right, right. before you walk into work. So that's such a great, a great message that you guys just said there because it is so true because it happens to me. I can't get upset with her in the morning. Because I'm just thinking about how I'm going to fix this all day when I'm yeah. going to run a team, you know? <laughs> or or you, you're thinking about how, how angry you are. Exactly. And look what, exactly. how she made me mad. And is she going to apologize to me? And, <laughs> and, 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 it's, and it's horrible. It's terrible. And, I don't want it. And even, even if I feel like I'm right, I, I say to myself two things. One ultimately is, how could I ever look negatively at her when when our Lord and Savior could look at me and look what I've done? I'm the wretch that I am. Mm-hmm. And and number two is, why be angry? I'm never leaving her. It's my best friend. Why would I ruin my day? Let's just get on with it. Forgive and move on. Yeah. It has nothing to do with being right or wrong. Nothing. Yeah, and, and absolutely, and you're right. And, and you just said something that's true. He forgiven all of us. Why can we can't forgive our partners? Exactly. So that, you know, that's I tell you, we you know this is something that we we weren't even touching on, and I love this that where this this interview is going because it's showing the the purpose of how we can work together, but also build something that we're looking forward to building, and how we're able to build it if we don't start with the right mindset. You know? And I so, think it's so important right. because it. If your foundation is not laid out right, and if you're already starting your day on the wrong foot, then how can you be of any service to anyone else, right? So I think, um, you know, and and I come from a a family where, you know, we would get upset with each other, argue just like anyone else would, but within seconds we were over it. (laughs) We didn't hold it. You know, so you know, for me, if I if I'm not worked up about something, I just need to walk away for a minute, <laughs> remove yeah. myself from from whatever conversation, so that I can just kind of think, get a grip, take a couple fresh breaths to kind of reset myself, and then I'm back in. <laughs> I'm back yeah, in. yeah, that's and, true. And I'm not going to drag it, and I'm certainly not taking it to the office. I'm not taking it to the next conversation. Um, and it's kind of weird sometimes because sometimes you got to get a grip real quick. You're really angry. You're in this heated argument. A call comes in, and you're like, "Hi, how are you?" <laughs> You know, you gotta let that go. <laughs> right, and most importantly, you're not gonna drag that on the whole day and then go to bed that way. That's the wrong way to start, you know. So that's right. So you're absolutely right, you know. And, uh, and I love it because we ask you, how do you guys get through some challenges here? And you you said communication and prayer. I love yeah. that. I love that. And Josh and I, we always talk about you know communication. Like there's some people who just kind of hold it, keep it to themselves, and they're not gonna say anything. And all you're doing is setting yourself up to blow up. So yeah. I would rather just tell them from the start what's bothering me, what um, what I want, you know, because sometimes people don't really understand what you want. So you got to be clear. This is what I want, or I don't want to yeah. see this. It's like a force, so, you know, so that's what it is. Yeah. So and you, you know, to touch on that a little bit for anybody listening, you know, people, yeah, people talk about communication, but I want the audience to know, you know, obviously if they're married couples, mm-hmm. um, you, you have to take that serious. I, we're not saying communicate what you feel like communicating or what you think feels right. We have conversations that are very, very difficult. Like if I'm feeling a certain way or she's feeling a certain way, 
and she knows when she brings it up or I know when I bring it up, it's going to piss that other person <laughs> off. But that's the way we feel. You have to, you do, have it. to do it. Yeah. And you it's have to, it's a truck. Yeah. You have to trust the other person, although may react negatively. And then I have to trust that he might react, but he's still going to But come she back knows I down. answer to the Lord. Yeah. And, and I'm going to go, all right, Lord, reveal this to me. And I, you know, nine out of 10 times, let's face it. We know deep down in our heart what we do wrong. We just don't want to react that way because most relationships don't trust the other person. It's almost like a game. Mm -hmm. And and believe we've both been in it. I don't want to play that game ever. We don't want to play ever. that game. So I, I tell him, I said, the Lord Jesus reveals his sweetness to me through the experience of forgiveness through our marital relationship. Like there's no better feeling in the entire world and seen on earth. Now, obviously there's the spiritual forgiveness, but it is, let's face it, it's more tangible when your husband pours forgiveness over you. Mm -hmm. And when you feel that forgiveness, then you can look to the father and say, now I understand the depth of your forgiveness. Yeah. It's like a great analogy. And, and we're not saying it's easy because we all live in our flesh. But, but I have to tell but you, it's, worth it. it's so worth <laughs> yeah. it. And, and the you're so right, Chuck and Angela, because the, that's that's a clear understanding of why um, marriages struggle sometimes. And they don't realize this more than communication, too, because that's something that Rebecca and I, we wrote on a book. And a matter of fact, our first course is, is coming out this week. And a lot of it had to do with the four C's. And people don't realize there's four C's to a relationship, really five. Okay. We, have, we threw one in there. <laughs> But when you think about it, Chuck, communication is actually third there because first you got to have the, the communion. You guys got to be committed to one another. Your commitment. You got to be committed to one another. Then you got to compromise. You got to learn how to say, you know what? Right or wrong, somebody's got to give in. Third is the communication that comes after the compromise, and that's forgiveness. And and the, and the last one is, um, oh my Lord, is. Uh, Oh my God! Sorry about that. I forgot about it. But the last one is basically you have to. Maybe it's, it's, it's cookies. cookies. It's cookies. It's cookies. It's cookies. It's cookies. <laughs> Work seven time. Work seven time. <laughs> but you know, it's it's so it, it, it's an understanding that people really really need to dive deep into that and understand that this this is a it's like you just said it's not easy but you got to understand how the process works. Yeah. It's not easy, but it is easy because if you if you go through the not easy. Everything else is easier. Yeah, you, yeah. you know what I learned? You, you said something, that word compromise. I love that. that that's great. And, and what, I, what I've learned is sometimes there is no right or wrong. Right. Sometimes it's right and right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the opinion. And it's something that we've learned. And, and I know I, I got it first and I said to her, look, even if your opinion or the way you feel I think is wrong, it's, it's still, still your, your feeling. feeling. Yeah. And your feeling's real to you, which makes it important to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think uh, what, being two completely different people, having two different mindsets and ways of, of wanting to do things, for us, usually it's a challenge that he wants to do something one way and I want to try it a different way. And so, you know, we'll go back and forth on whose way is better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and at the end of it, you know, it's it's that compromise, and and I know that some people might think of it as settling, but it's not settling. It's compromising, right? So it's like yeah. we, we'll give a little bit. I'll, well, maybe we can do it this way, and we can try it that way, yes. and then just kind of come in, in between in the middle there and find a new way to to appease both of us, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think early is just about compromising, and if you can't compromise, then you're in trouble because if 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 there is no compromise and it's my way or the highway, that mindset's not going to get you anywhere, you know? Right. That's not going to help you, right. not get you far. Yeah, what I usually do is I let it be her way, and when it fails, He's I'll right. just keep reminding He's her right. her right. way fails. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I love that. Well, it's working for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys taken the disc assessment? Yes. yes. So what what are you guys? All right. So I'm an SI. No, I'm, I'm a DI. Oh, 
Oh, see, we're both, we're both high off the chart D's. D's. That's oh, it. Too. I'm, I'm D's. Right. My D was like off the books. It, it, it can, you can't even bring it back, Chuck. So what happens is that we're on high D. Like we have nothing to Both of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have two strong personalities. Yeah, don't Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know why, why God, the God is so sweet because um, when I learned about submission in the Bible, before knowing Christ, I thought it was stupid. Like what? And he is like the perfect person that God gave me to understand biblical, like Christian submission, like Proverbs 31. Mm -hmm. Otherwise I never would have been able to do it with anyone. It's like a perfect match because he's as strong as I am. Stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So for those who are watching and you're curious about the DISC assessment, uh, you can easily go to TonyRobbins.com forward slash DISC, D-I-S-C, and you can take the DISC profile test. It'll give you a full assessment based on how you answer the questions as to which character trait you most dominate. Now, we all have uh, a variable of all of the uh, assessment or the, the character traits, but there'll be one or two that you're really strong in. And it'll be interesting to see what, what uh, trait you have. So if you've never done it, I encourage you to try it today. Or you could also do the love languages. So have you guys done the one, the assessment for the love language? Yes. All right, and which one were you? They're the same. <laughs> and we're also the same, but which one were you? I don't remember. Physical touch. Physical touch. Physical touch. How yeah. lovely. We yeah. both came out quality time. <laughs> yeah, you know, I learned that early on running in the nightclubs. I love that physical touch. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, let's get back to real estate. <laughs> All right, so. Um, what would you say has been one of your biggest challenges? And I see your answer here, but it's got to be deeper than that. <laughs> so my answer was crappy people. Really so, crappy people. Yeah. So, so really, if I was to dive in a little deeper, because we ran businesses, and and I'm, I'm yes, there, there she goes. First, correct me. <laughs> All right. <Put> um, <laughs> so, um, because we ran businesses. We, we had to, you know, a lot of people who don't run companies don't realize that one of the most difficult things about running companies is dealing with staff. And when we say crappy people, what we really mean by that is, look, we're all crappy people, saved by grace. And, but there, there are people that were close to us. Yeah, let me backtrack. Me and Angela used to always say, because we ran such a successful business, we didn't know if people were around us because That's what true. they could get from us or if they really liked us and we had a relationship. So there were a lot of people we thought were good friends who screwed us over. Yeah. And it really hurts when you open up yourself to people because you really cared and then come to find out they only cared enough of what they could get from you. When that was done, it, they, they would just screw you up. Yeah, that was, that was certainly challenging. I think that as we matured over the years, that got, it doesn't ever get easier emotionally, but it was less surprising. And so the, the challenges that were popping up for us tended to be more like, how do you, how do you, we were actually not great managers of people as it turns out. Like, I don't know, like we know how to do things and get things done. But then the, the challenge became, how do we find people to come alongside us with the same mindset and to execute the way that we want to execute and go as fast as we're going and change as fast as because we're Because we're drivers. Yes. Yes. So that was also very, very challenging. Yeah. It's just, I think going find the right people to surround yourself with. Right. Mm -hmm. Going back to what Chuck said is, um, I, I, it's disappointing, but always remember something that we're all blessed because of the challenges and the, and, and the belief and faith that we have in God. I think Second of all, yeah, it builds your character. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When, you go in, when you go in with a pure heart, the Lord said it, you know what, love your, love your neighbor like yourself. And he meant that for a reason, because no yeah. matter what, do not change. Even through the pain and the, and right. the disappointments, bring challenges, but it also brings growth and it brings blessings. So that's the way I see it always. I feel yeah. like 
helps we've been there where you guys have been. I understand that. I, I think yeah. it helps to build your leadership skills and probably help you to develop a thick skin. I, I know that I've dealt with my fair share. And uh, at the end of it, I think it always served to make me stronger. So, you know, I kind of thank God even in that because, mm -hmm. you know, it's just honestly for every stone that was thrown at me, it helped me to build that pave that to pave that road. So I thank them. <laughs> Yeah, and, and for every stone that was thrown at me, it was more stones for me to throw back. But, <laughs> I love that. I'm good at catching those catch stones. You. I got a good arm. I actually love that one. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't he doesn't take, really throw them Don't back. take me up on that. He wants to. He wants to bring them back. <laughs> yeah. Don't say, Chuck told me that. So, so tell us a little bit about, um, I know that you guys have, you guys have a podcast and a book that you guys have written. Tell, tell the audience a little bit about it. So we, we used to do this thing probably is it like at least seven years now. I think it was longer, the, the morning. We, 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 we oh, started yeah. out. She's leaving. I don't know where she's going. Hi. See you. <laughs> she's, she's, uh, she started. We started out with uh, uh, Money, 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 Money Mindset. mindset. Yeah, so every Monday, it was about, about eight years. Yeah. We would do it live in our building. It was before podcasts. And um, then recently when we switched to EXP, um, we said we don't want to do it live anymore because then COVID did too. True, same uh, we switched the Monday morning mindset to midweek mind freak. And we, me and Angela, we love pouring into people. Like it doesn't matter if they're in real estate or not. And we, be, we believe in the power of the mind. We believe God has blessed us with this right here that could accomplish anything um we we love joyce meyer's battlefield, uh, battlefield of, the of the mind because i i really i look at that as um so true there's constantly a battle mm -hmm. going on up here mm -hmm. and the question is are you winning it or losing it mm -hmm. and so every wednesday we do a thing called midweek mind freak and then when we move the brokerage over to exp realty which I, I got to tell you was probably the best the thing we ever did. I was going to say the hardest thing. It was the hardest thing. It was the hardest thing. We I, didn't sleep for six months. You I'm know, not what, even kidding. What people don't realize is our company was valued at about $15 million. And we were making a lot of money. We were successful. We literally closed it down overnight. Yep. Like nobody paid us for the company. It's not like they said, hey, Here's ten million dollars, and we're like, oh, that's a good cushion to stop building. It, we, it was zero, nothing. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I even joked around. I, I said to Sam Rodriguez, I go and Chris Bear, I go, could you at least give me some stock for it? And he no, goes, that's illegal. That's illegal. <laughs> like, okay, uh, darn it. <laughs> so, so when we made the move, um, we like to talk about our journey and experience. So every Tuesday night. We, we talk about the massive real estate rebuild. And really what it is, is we are literally rebuilding our entire business from the ground up to prove that EXP is the real deal, the real deal. to build something bigger and better than what we had. And we're so <laughs> And then um, Angela and Kristen do Moms in Real Estate. I do a podcast called Moms in Real Estate. We've been doing that for about three years. Okay. So oh, there's Veronica. Oh, yes. there is. We talked to you, Veronica. Well, no, Veronica, <laughs> you in Arizona. I want to see her. Yes. Oh, my God. So tell us who we wrote. We wrote this book. Ah, oh, there you Mastering go. Mastering Your Real Estate Career. Tell us about that book, then. So, by the way, lots of people say it's good. <laughs> she didn't ask it out the way. Tell us about the book. It's, um, it's literally, it's about, obviously it's about real estate, but mostly we combine the um, our life, our, life our stories, and the foundational concepts of real estate with the mindset of real estate. So uh, it's an easy read. It's quick. It's entertaining. It's, you know, what we really wanted to portray to agents is anybody getting in this business could be successful. We went from literally broke, ready mm -hmm. to get out of the business, to not only being one of the top agents in the country, 
running one of the top teams, but then running one of the top brokerages. And my next goal is running one of the top world teams in the uh, XP. Absolutely. So what we're just showing is anybody, we're just two peons. Yeah. There's nothing special about us. Yeah, anyone can do at it. All. We can do it. I need to be your mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> Learn from the best. Yeah. We will, we will tell you everything, yeah, everything. we do. Yeah, no secret. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because you say that, and our book is a little bit related like that. It's basically our journey. You know, we spoke about our journey, our struggles. And just like you just said, you know what? If we can do it, anyone can do it. We're we ready. had a lot of pitfalls and yeah. challenges that we had to overcome. And so we talk about, you know, going through financial ruin and then just kind of bouncing back from that. So, okay. you know. Yep. I'm going to read your book. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's great. People, people <laughs> need to people hear get a hold that. Of your book, by the way. What's that? Where can people get a hold of your book? It's on Amazon, or I'll send it to you for free. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I just, I'm just curious in case that anyone listening wants to read your book, where they can find it. Y'all know that you can just look it up on Amazon. Ours is uh, marriedinrealestate.com, so anyone can register. It will shortly be in Amazon. It's yeah. like, you know, <laughs> so we're excited to receive. That. I want it right next to our book. Uh, I love it. We'll make know. that happen. Nick, did you hear that? <laughs> Yeah, you know one thing that I, I do love about uh, what you just said, Chuck and Angela, is that you guys are such a giving people. Even from the first time we met you guys on uh, Live with yeah. Leaders, and we were able to just you know behind the scenes yeah. kind of you know talk and man, and I told Rebecca, I said, wow, you know, it's crazy how you can meet other other individuals, other leaders, and how open they are, and they just welcome you, and you know. Just to hear that, and I'm telling this to the audience, guys, this couple here, they're exactly the way they are right now. They're very giving, very loving, and I love that about both of you guys. Straightforward, I love that. Yes. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. So, getting back to our interview here. <laughs> <laughs> I love no I love every all the directions that we've gone into today and um, just really enjoying our conversation but I want to know what has been your favorite date night or vacation scenic river cruises yeah, European we, river cruises we love 100% we love going to Europe just uh, love yeah. it river we, cruises and they're river cruises so they're not ocean liners when people hear cruises I, I hate cruises these are five five star floating hotels mm -hmm. that if the boat was sinking, you just go to the top with your drink. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. and you survive. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're not in the middle of any big water. No. But you get to see history. History and it's 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 literally a long boat, like the Viking ships. We see in America, we see the Viking ships. So it looks yeah. something like that, but I think scenic is like we talk about we, who are we talking to? Maybe it was Sam Rodriguez. We said we want to get a bunch of EXP people we're gonna get and a get the whole boat. And we're, oh, we're going to include, <laughs> we're in. ballers. We're gonna include ballers who can make it happen. It's, it's, no weenies. So, so I want to share something with you. So about three years ago, like God's given me a gift of being he a visionary. great vision. It's crazy. And, and I don't write stuff down. I visualize it and it comes to fruition. Mm -hmm. And about three years ago, um, so we used to tra we travel a lot. We'd go away for a month, and when we travel, just so the audience knows, it's not with our kids. No, no, no. That that's a no. Like we we <laughs> believe in our time together alone. So so we would travel these trips, and they were lavish vacations, and and we worked to get there. And one year, I said I said to her, I go, there are certain people that are at our company at Revelation that are close friends, and I said, we need to make it a point to bless them. Let them experience what we experience. Mm -hmm. And I said, we need to take them, some of them with us. Mm -hmm. And we said, we need to make that a plan. So last year, it was last year? It was, yeah. A year it was, and a half it ago. Was, last, no, no, last year. August. Last August, yeah. Mm -hmm. We were able to take uh, three couples Two couples, my sister and another friend, all expenses paid um, on a on a river cruise with right, us. Yeah. Then to Italy. Yeah. And it was awesome. It's those <laughs> are my type of dreams. 
Oh wow. my God! How long? Could you watch? Could you watch? Yeah. Your heart is your heart is gold, man. I love that. You know, to, you know, and honestly, that's what people don't realize, man. You know, I always, I, and I truly believe it. Rebecca said, she hears me say it all the time. When you give, you when you when you give, you receive in multiples, man, and it's so oh, true. Sure. You have to be given. You know, it's like everyone tells us why you pour so much into people, even 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 if when they're not they're not part of you. I said, you know what? I don't see it that way. I mean, even our, in our book launch, there's a young man that actually opened up. They did the invocation for us, but we know this young man. He was 12 years old, Chuck and Angela, and he was just like, he used to hang out with our kids. Wow. And when he went into real estate, I mean, the kid's a very smart kid, very well educated. And um, I remember the day he said, "I'm going into real estate." I'm like, I was so happy for him. And even through all that time, he actually was working with someone else throughout his whole entire career. But he would never call his broker. He would call me for everything. And I would help him for everything. And never he was never part of my team. And I remember he just he just reminded me about that when he actually opened up in our in our in our launch. He brought that all that memory back to me. And I'm like, wow, see, Lord, that's the legacy I want to leave into someone. That's it. We're not pointing into people only because right. we know that it's, it's not about the money, bring man. Bring us no. back voluntarily. No. We give just because we want to, and, yeah. and we see things in other people, when we see that they're hungry and they're willing to learn, they're coachable, that gives us pride to coach them, even if there's not necessarily a monetary uh, yes. uh, benefit coming back to us. And the Lord blesses us in other ways. Yeah. Other opportunities come about. Um, true friendships are established and, and just it just always comes back. So I am, I'm always honored to be able, both of us are feel that way. We love pouring into other people and I know that we have already started to see that coming into our business as we've been experiencing this growth. And uh, it's just beautiful when you can do that, when you're not looking at people's dollar signs, you know? Yeah, that's, that's the joy of what drives us mm -hmm. because it isn't the monetary. It's, it's getting to go on the trips and me getting to look at their faces while they're experiencing like the cathedrals and the palaces like i've already experienced it and i got joy out of watching their joy Absolutely. Um, exactly. so, was, so our trips is we love europe we love um the the history we love italy um we would probably move to italy for for months if we could um, <laughs> Absolutely love Italy. We went to um, Florence and Rome. Rome. And Rome. Uh, we've only been there once, but we loved our time there. It was just yeah. beautiful. The one we love too, Madrid. I love Madrid. I wasn't crazy about Barcelona, but I love Madrid. You know, it's, it, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because her uncle, he was there as a missionary, and her aunt, and um, and her a couple of her family members went, her father and her mom, and they said Madrid was beautiful. They loved Madrid, the history, just the culture. Right. right? Yeah, it's beautiful there. Beautiful. Yeah, so we gotta beautiful. we gotta all plan a trip. Yeah, so. I, yeah. I love that. I would love that. <laughs> I haven't been to Europe in a few years. Last one was to England and then we did a day trip to France. And I'm um, ready. I'm yes. ready for that next trip. <laughs> Same thing. We travel we travel together. Always. She's oh. my Buddy, I can't always, do it by isn't yeah. that that that's, just that's, that's yeah. a blessing uh -huh. when you get to enjoy life with your best friend. Yeah. It really is. Everyone, everyone tells us even when we travel to, you know, we have speaking engagements or we have conferences to go to, we we always end up spending one or two days extra or one or, or even before that and just Same. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the time, man. Yeah. You're there for a reason for each other, too. You know, you know, you know guilty confession. So if we have, say, like a business center or <laughs> we have, like, whatever we have and we have to be somewhere, say we have to be there at 6, mm -hmm. we'll show up at 5. To so have a little have a date, date before. First. Oh, oh, I love that. I love that. We go on dates Every at least. Every day. Almost at least five, six nights. Five, six nights. Yeah. I mean, seen that here. So you mentioned that. I love that. You know, you don't just have the once a week or the oh, once no. or two week date night. But, and it should be that way. It should we, be we, at least. You know, we talk about this. We love making the money we make for that reason. For, for that days. we could go out yeah. every night. Like our kids even say that. Like our, our adopted daughter, she'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to date again yeah, tonight. Yeah, she's like, yesterday, she's like, 
Where are you guys going? Are you guys going on a date? Uh, <laughs> yes. What a legacy, though. What a legacy you're leaving for them to pour into right. their partner, to love on them, and to, mm -hmm. to to go out as much as you can to work for that. That's what we work. Well, everyone's different. Like I'm not going to criticize people who want to do different things. Like maybe they have another way to express that. But for mm -hmm. us, we that's what we enjoy. So well, if I could say something that's actually controversial to a lot of married couples. You're going to say something controversial? That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of married couples that struggle, the first thing I say to them is, where do you spend most of your time, with your kids or your spouse? And I watch too many married couples when they say, well, what's important to you? And they say, kids first, all the time. And I go, that's your problem. Yeah. And they look, at me, they look at me like I'm nuts. Your kids are not your priority in your life. It's not biblical. Your spouses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you're right. Your how are you going to be able to take care of them if, if your partner, you guys are not aligned together? You understand? I agree with you. Bro. I really yeah. do. It's a biblical concept. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I think it's God first, family, and then the church. No, God, spouse, spouse. family. That's it. Well, yeah. it well, I'm not telling you. You do whatever you want. <laughs> Or bossy, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> perfectly fine. You are right. You are right. So, um, all right. What do we have here next? <laughs> so, what's next for you guys? Tell yeah. me. What's next for the following? Uh, we're actually doing it right now. Is our next because we, when we transitioned our brokerage, um, a, a whole new. We're passionate people. We can't even live day to day without passion. But I'm going to tell you, listen, my whole spirit is on fire for this whole EXP thing. And it's not EXP. It is EXP. It's what EXP affords us to do. We can bless more people now in a greater way, in a more uh, a profound way than we've ever been able to do before. So I get to spend most of my time now doing what I love and what ignites me. And we, I am reaching out to people all over the United States and helping them to build businesses and yeah. helping them to like realize that this is the best industry ever. I mean, I love it. Yeah. It is fantastic. And the, the other thing is we like to do extravagant things to, to be a blessing to people. So we recently, we bought a, another house um, and moved. We, we didn't think we were gonna move ever again, but we That's bought it for the sole purpose of entertaining 4EX Realty. Yeah. So we literally just gutted the entire backyard and house and transformed it into like it's if you've seen it, oh, it's I see it. like a resort. Yeah, I saw it. You posted on Facebook and I guess you have oh. a gathering coming up. Gorgeous, man. Congratulations on that. What is it? Yeah, we're gonna uh, fly we're gonna fly you in. Please. We're flying you in one day. I'm yes, gonna tell you, you right now. <laughs> we have um we have two full bars. What are you doing Thursday? Commercial. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you only have to tell her once, Angela. Oh, we're, going we're going to Puerto Rico Friday. <laughs> Save it for another week. Uh-oh. Are you moving to Puerto Rico, too? Huh? Are you guys moving to Puerto Rico, too? Well, um, yes, we are. Well, we're not moving, but we are going to get an investment property out there. It just makes sense for us. We have my older kids. They live there, and we're, we oh, travel oh. a lot. So. Yeah, oh, my so you you're yeah. not doing it for the tax reasons. Uh, oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing for? Oh, I'm too. Of course. It's not illegal. I don't think so. You make it like, oh, God, it's illegal. <laughs> no, it's not illegal. No, it's completely legal. It, it is. is. It is completely legal. It is. But, um, but yeah, that wouldn't be my primary reason, but certainly we'll take advantage of that. So, <laughs> so but you plan on being there more than six six months out of the year. Well, to, when, when we when we looked at it um, for the past two years, we've been going to Puerto Rico about four or five times a year. So <laughs> I when I looked so. when I looked at how much time we spend in Puerto Rico is probably like almost two months, man. I'm not kidding you. And um, so if it's something that we may look at in the future, Chuck and Angela, I'm not sure yet, but I want to be prepared if we do decide to make that decision, you know? Because so, I know Brent Gove and Gene Fredericks was telling us about that. Yeah, well, yeah we were just with Gene um, two weeks ago. Gene was here. Yeah, he wants to have dinner with us when we fly in next week. 
when, when I lived in New York, I used to go to Puerto Rico a lot. And um, I haven't been there in, gosh, 20-something 20, 20 years. 20 something yeah. years. Oh, you guys need to go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we should just go to Puerto Rico then. <laughs> <laughs> so are you guys in Florida? Where are you at? Florida. We're in Orlando. Oh, you are in Florida. Okay. Yeah, Orlando, Florida right now. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. So have you ever been out to Arizona? Wait, do you forget we're live? Like there's other people watching. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, we're going to have a private conversation. We're like, hey, so anybody in your house? Yeah. <laughs> Fazio's and the Sotos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, the base is I, love I love it. I love it. Um, what was the question? No, I, mean, no. I don't know. Go back to your show. I know. I, I hijacked, We're disruptors. I hijacked your show. I love it. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Stay on. We're going to go ahead and finish the live broadcast, but I'd love to continue the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> All right. For everyone listening, if you want a copy of their book, which is, what was the title again? Mastering Your Real Estate Career. Mastering Your Real Estate Career. You can just search it up on Amazon. It is available. And for our book, Married in Real Estate, you can go to marriedinrealestate.com. Thanks, everyone. It has been awesome. And I hope you'll join us for the next show.